Hey, it's Hunt. You found Hunt on Saints. We're talking black and gold football. Do us a favor. Hit the like button, share your comments below, and hit that subscription button so you can get all of our content. Enjoy. All right, let's head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. We'll go down to NOLA, maybe Metairie, maybe New Orleans, who knows. But Luke's down there somewhere. He'll join us each and every Thursday throughout football season. He does so now. Luke, how are you? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Kind of a newsy day, uh, a newsy week in Saints camp. I think one of the things that probably front of mind for y'all is, is the Saints may move training camp out of South Louisiana. Is that a distinct possibility? Yeah, I think it's actually uh, more than a possibility. I think it's a likelihood for next year. Um, yeah, this is kind of being driven right now by the uh, the fact that the team needs to build a new cafeteria, which is connected to their indoor facility, which, uh, yeah, I, I mean, you need that thing for uh, – for training camp itself, and then you know the construction would be all all around the indoor facility, just kind of make it impossible to have training camp down here next year. So, uh, would fully expect them to take the show on the road in 2024. Um, and you know, I, I don't know, man. Maybe beyond, it's it's really hard to hold it down here. <laughs> I mean, it is it is brutal. Uh, and it's it's been brutal forever, but um, yeah, I, I don't even know how these guys are out there practicing right now. It's hard enough just to go out there and watch. It's uh, it's tough. Uh, it's we were out there on, on LSU's practice field today, and it's uh, it's rather toasty. Of course, I'm the only guy out there in pants because I'm in work attire like an idiot. But it is what it is. Um, let's talk about the yeah, preseason game. That's <laughs> that's yeah. not it's not great. Uh, so let's talk about the preseason game. They'll crank things up on Sunday. Uh, how much do you expect to see of the starters? Um, you know, my, my colleague Jeff Duncan reported today that uh, the starters should probably get about 15 plays each um you know it's it, you're looking at maybe two series for the offense uh you know, maybe two or three for the defense um and yeah i think that's about right i think that makes sense uh the next couple of weeks after this first preseason game uh they're going to have joint practices and I, I think a lot of the nfl coaches he talked to would say they probably get a little bit more out of the joint practices in the games um just because you don't know who you're going to be going up against in the games, you know you don't know if the teams aren't going to necessarily be running their their full schemed looks uh, when that's going to be on tape for other teams to study. Uh, whereas in practice, yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, so yeah, I, I think it makes sense for them to to run the starters out there week one, let them get uh, you know adjusted to each other, and you know kind of play it on a week by week basis after that, and maybe get the you know, get those guys out of there after joint practices and don't even bother like risking them getting injured in preseason games two and three. Are there a couple of starters, I mean, I'm kind of thinking of Trevor Penning specifically, that may play a little bit more than, say, Derek Carr or you know, whoever the, the veteran may be? Yeah, I mean, I think Penning is, is probably a guy I'm most keeping an eye on there, right? I mean, they, I think they've been bringing him along slowly in training camp, and they've been you know, giving him some rest and, and letting him have some days where he takes, like, two practice reps and then, and then comes out um, during full team periods. Uh, but we've seen him go more and more and um and he's a guy who needs it right like he was making a huge jump going from northern iowa to the nfl last year and he didn't get the reps he missed basically the entire season he missed 11 games he only started one um and you know on top of that he spent his entire most of his off season rehabilitating the liz frank injury in his foot so he needs the the game time game speed snaps and i think they're going to give him a lot one guy that I'm curious to hear your thoughts on is is Chris Olave as he kind of enters his second camp where instead of this is a rookie who looks pretty good, they invested a first round pick to like this dude needs to be our number one. I don't think there's any question about it uh, right now in my mind he is their number one. Uh, I know Mike is Mike Thomas is back and healthy um, but I, I think there's I think there's a gap between him and him and Olave. Uh, Olave looks like he's ready to be a star, man. Um uh, and it's it's weird to say that you think a guy is going to you know make this big jump from his rookie season when he had a thousand yards and you know, he didn't even play the full season. You know, he's one of the best rookie receivers in Saints history, um, but he put on you know, a little bit of muscle this year. It's not like super noticeable, but you know, seven pounds I think could be a big deal for him. Um, he was a guy who you know often last year had trouble holding onto the ball either through contact uh, by a defender or through contact with the ground. I don't think there's going to be an issue for him, and he has not. He's not lost any of his explosiveness. I mean, look, the Saints' defensive backfield is probably their deepest unit on the team, and he was just torching guys in one-on-ones today. I mean, good players. Um, 
they had looked like they had no chance keeping up with them. And even when they did, um, you know, he reached over Alante Taylor today and made a, a great contested catch. That's the sort of catch he wasn't making last year. Um, it's the second time we've seen him do it in uh, in about a week of practice. I, I think the guy is just going to be a star. I, I think, like, legitimately putting himself in the conversation among the NFL's elite receivers this year. Chatting with Luke Johnson, Saints beat reporter for the Advocate, been down there at Saints camp all August long. Um, I'll stick to the offense briefly and and talk about the tight end spot. Uh, I'll just throw that out there open ended. I could ask by one individual, but I think there's a few storylines there worth worth looking at. What have you seen? over the last week at tight end? Uh, I really like where that group is at right now. Um, I think they've got a good like mix of skill sets there. Um, Juwan Johnson, I, I think, I mean, the guy's done nothing but improve every year in his career. Obviously, he came here as just like a big body blocking wide receiver, and they moved him to tight end. Um, but I, I think if you just like kind of extrapolate his, his usage last year, you, you like – take those numbers and multiply them by like what the, the, the big time NFL tight ends get in terms of like targets and everything. I think he would have been right there. Um, you know, top five uh, receivers, in the NFL as a tight end. I mean, he is just so athletic and so smooth. Um, and when you add elements like, like Olave getting better, uh, when you add Alvin Kamara, uh, being more of a weapon in the passing game, which I think is going to be true this year. Um, I think Rashid Shahid, whenever he gets back from his groin, as long as he's healthy, I think he, you know, he, he has an over the top element that makes it just creates space. Um, and I think um, you look at what Derek Carr has done over his career, a guy who caught more passes than anybody from Carr in Oakland was, or Oakland, Las Vegas was Darren Waller. And that includes, you know, Amari Cooper and Michael Crabtree and some really, really good receivers that he worked with over there. Um, Darren Waller was the guy and you, you can go down the list it's like the four out of the top 12 guys in terms of receptions were tight ends and we see that day after day after day in practice he's going to, to Juwan and you know gotta have it moments um, I think they're going to have a really nice connection this year I really like Foster Moreau's addition he's like a like a true wide tight end for these guys um, and you know, I don't think he's going to be out there catching like 50 passes, 60 passes this year, but I think he's going to play a hugely important role in that offense. Uh, Jimmy Graham, I look, I mean, I can't imagine him getting more than like 15 snaps a game. I think if they are in that spot, um, something's gone wrong, but he's still clearly got it as a pass catcher. Um, and you know, we saw him out there yesterday, he caught six passes and six targets, uh, caught passes from all three quarterbacks. I, you know, is he going to be that every game? No, but I think he's still got something left in the tank. And we were talking about like red zone stuff. I think he'd be a, a weapon down there. I mean, it's not like he's shrunk from six, seven <laughs> and then Taysom Hill. I, yeah. I, I still, I'm not sold on him as like a tight end, um, but he's definitely gotten better as a pass catcher. Um, that was a huge weakness in his game. It's gotten better there. And I still think I like his clear best role is, is, when they put him in as a, as a run first quarterback who can hurt you with his arm. Um, I, so I, I just think that's a really fun group. It's, it's a really diverse group. It's unlike, I think any other tight end group in the NFL. And I, I think that could be honestly one of their strengths on offense this year. So help me out here because we know the NFL is a numbers game with the, the 53 and with the practice squad and all that kind of stuff. You're telling me the saints are going to show up in week one and two of the roster spots are going to be gadget running quarterback and red zone tight end. I mean, is that, that's legitimately part of their 53? If you're talking about Graham yeah, and Hill, think, obviously. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. Okay. You know, Taysom is, is essentially their emergency quarterback on game day, right? And, um, and you know, Jimmy, I think, can serve – or I'm sorry, Juwan, I think, can serve multiple roles for this. You know, I, was, I was telling somebody about this today. I, I don't think they need to keep a fifth-ride receiver on this team necessarily, you know, or, or to keep a guy on the team strictly to be, like, their blocking receiver because I think – Juwan can fill that role. It's not like when you put him on the outside of a formation, you're telegraphing that it's a run because he does that stuff all the time in their normal offense. Um, so I, I think just some of the versatility of these players allows you to keep four tight ends in your roster and keep guys who have like small limited roles. That's interesting. I think most eyes for Saints fans once the crew comes out will probably be on pinning for as long as he's in there. And then, hey, what's this rookie quarterback got? What is uh, the expectation for Hayner as he uh, probably gets his first action this week? 
if you would have asked me a week ago, it would have been like, man, he's going to go out there and throw three touchdowns and light it up, and like everybody's going to love him. Um, I'm, and he's he's cooled off uh, okay. after a really really hot start, um, and yeah, it's uh, look, it's tough. It's tough coming into the NFL, and and I think that's as a rookie quarterback, I think that's why he opened so many eyes his first week of training camp. Um, but it's it started to you know, be a little bit more of a slog every day, and he's starting to you know show some rookie moments, but. All that being said, I still think he's a really good player. I still think he's a really interesting player. And they obviously saw something in him beyond you know, the, the stuff that everybody looked at, where they were like, he's undersized, he doesn't have a big arm. Um, you know, he doesn't, like, he, he plays like he doesn't believe that about it. Like he plays like he's 6'4 with you know, Justin Herbert's arm. Um, and, you know, maybe that'll get him into trouble, but I think he's a lot of fun. And it's certainly not, you know, watching you know, Ian Book come in and, and, complete check down after check down after check down and go three and out after averaging four yards per attempt. You know, he's going to go in there and sling it. I'm, I'm really excited to see what he does. I just think that, um, you know, the hype trains maybe not derailed, but it's, it's losing a little bit of steam. The high in New Orleans on Sunday game day is 99 degrees. Will you be bringing a jacket to work? <laughs> yeah. <of course. laughs> I'm, just, I'm just debating like, like what kind of jacket, like do I need to bring a parka? Um, <laughs> For those who don't know, the Superdome press yeah. box is legendarily freezing cold. Yeah, it's look they got a, they got a cool uh, you know whatever hundred thousand square foot building it is um, with sixty seven fans. They got you know, these massive air conditioning units which are conveniently placed about ten feet above where you sit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like I, it's it's seriously it's a, the dumbest thing when you go up there and it's ninety nine degrees outside and everybody's wearing jackets and their stats are blowing all into the fans. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the the seats. It's just, oh man. But look, I'd rather have that than sit outside and just be sweating my face off for three hours. Enjoy some live football. We'll talk next week. Sounds good, man. Hey, it's on. Thanks for watching Hunt on Saints. Before you leave, help us out a little bit. Hit that like button. Leave your comments in the section below, and hit that subscribe button so you get all our content right here from Hunt on Saints. We'll see you next time.